Right. Having dealt with quantitative risk analysis and the numbers, we get to qualitative risk analysis and we will get to the reason that you should never use numbers, at least not in qualitative risk analysis. Now, there, well, I, I should say about quantitative risk analysis, I, I did some research uh, and basically nobody uses it. I was kind of surprised at this. Even the banks, even the big banks, only use quantitative risk analysis in uh, where, where they have to, in the capital risk areas. They, they are required by certain regulations. Um, but also in, uh, in terms of doing operational risk, which is basically what we refer to as, as risk analysis, uh, they uh, only use quantitative risk analysis in, in very small, limited, scoped, specific project areas. Um, very limited basis. Um, quantitative risk analysis is definitely... Uh, labor intensive and you want to make sure that you have enough people enough resources enough time uh, to do that uh, there's there's a bit of risk analysis that has to go on in terms of choosing what you do in terms of risk analysis so um, so it's it basically almost never used even though I am morally certain that you will see a question about it on the exam but um, qualitative risk analysis is definitely possible as a matter of fact uh, sometimes it's easy sometimes it's too easy and thereby hangs a tail and uh, various dangers associated with it you see it is what they tend to refer to as scenario-based. That means you're telling stories. And by and large, you're telling yourself stories. You are looking at uh, certain risks. You are thinking, you know, what could go wrong? If it goes wrong, what will happen? How bad is it going to be? And then what are we going to do about it? And how effective is that? And all of this is just scenario based it's it's a story it's a story uh well hopefully it's it's not something you make up out of the whole cloth um hopefully you are basing it on experience on uh, uh some kind of uh historical precedents that you may have obtained from other people whatever it may be but it's still a story Keep that in mind, uh, please, because this is where most people are going to do most of their uh, risk analysis. Um, as I have frequently uh, mentioned, take every opportunity to talk to senior management, to educate them. Um, have scenarios in, you know, whenever you get asked, come and speak to the board or uh, senior management, whatever level. Um, have a bunch of scenarios that you keep in your desk um, as elevator pitches. This is not necessarily what you're going to be asked to talk about today, but you know, have uh, some interesting points. Uh, have some metrics from you know results of uh, you know our assurance requirements in in terms of how well um, what you have been doing is working. And, and those sorts of things uh, uh, so that you can use them, you know, in, in case you get to, you know, ride up in the elevator for 25 seconds with the CFO, uh, you know, make a, make a pitch, have a couple of those handy to, to talk about. Uh, and as I say, you know, not necessarily, uh, as a matter of fact, mostly not uh, what you are going to be talking, what you have asked 
to talk about by the board or senior management or wherever and whatever it is that you've been called upon to do. So, um, these uh, areas, you know, it, it's that is one of the advantages of qualitative risk analysis is the communications advantage. You know, people love stories. So, yeah, uh, this is something that you can tell senior management and, you know, they're going to enjoy it. They're not going to be thinking, oh, yeah, yet another security guy doing this pitch. So, uh, anyways, it's, um, it's handy for communication, it, you know, and it is possible. Um, how valuable? Hmm. Anyways, you, you make up a scenario, a story for each threat. Like I said, you know, it, it, same as for quantitative risk analysis. You got a whole bunch of different threats. Uh, make up scenarios about them. Uh, what can they do? Uh, what can happen? What are we doing? What can we do? What are we doing? Uh, how effective is that likely to be? Um, do we have some remedial risks that we have to deal with? You know, all of those go into your scenarios when you're doing the qualitative risk analysis for uh, a whole bunch of them. And, and then, having done that, you rank the threats. Now, here's where the, the danger comes in. Please, you know, rank threats according to uh, high, medium, low, according to ABC if you want, according to color coding if you want, whatever you want to do with the threats in, in terms of ranking them to, you know, see which ones are priorities. But do not number them, please. Uh, as soon as you attach numbers to this stuff, people start thinking that numbers are real. Uh, you know, and of course, the, the classic example of this is the, the DEF CON. You know, what does DEF CON 1 mean? What does DEF CON 5 mean? Is DEF CON 5 five times as dangerous as DEF CON 1? Or, or, you know, what... Uh, it's, you know, you, you put numbers to things and, and people start thinking that it is more than just ordinal. That these numbers are real. And they're not. Uh, this comes from stories. So, uh, if you can, please test your scenarios somehow. Um, see if they are realistic, because that is the, the grave danger with quantitative risk analysis is that we, we make up these stories and we don't know whether there is any reality to them, whether this stuff is, um, is realistic. And after all, we are basing our, uh, our planning, our management of security our budgeting even on these things and and so having it you know purely scenario based purely coming out of our background is an extreme danger so you know here is someplace where auditing and at least having somebody else's opinion even if it's only an opinion is going to be very very valuable so if you're doing qualitative risk analysis Definitely the auditors are your best friends.